Hey everybody, Paul here in the garden. I'm gonna show you how big these beets are that I'm growing. Um, a little while ago, I posted a video about using a fish emulsion fertilizer. And I just wanna show you the amazing results here on these Detroit red beets. This is, this is pretty typical of what I'm growing here this summer. This is a, again, a Detroit red beet. Look at the size of that beet, man. That's a solid four and a half inches across. There's a feast for the eyes. Detroit red, Detroit gold beets. Just amazing eating. Eat the greens as well, sauteed or steamed. And I either steam boil the beets or roast the beets. You guys give a thumbs up to the video, please. Post your comments below about your favorite organic fertilizing methods, and happy gardening. Check it out, these ants are just infesting the summer squash plant. They're laying their eggs in that crack there in the summer squash stalk, really nasty. So what we're gonna do is apply black pepper, just everyday dollar store black pepper right into that crack in the plant. And all around here, these ants hate pepper and we want to protect these sweet young summer squash plants here. Look at these ants just emerging out of this soil. They hate this stuff and this black pepper is going to totally eradicate them. Check back with you guys in a couple weeks to show how this works out and so we can continue getting a yield off here because right now these plants are drying up and they're dying because of these damn ants. All right, it's been 10 days since I applied the black pepper here. You can see there's not an ant in sight. And the summer squash are still growing real good. So even though the ants started to kill this stalk, and including this one here, they kind of decimated that one, but still a little summer squash coming off there. Now, you can use black pepper. I'm going to have to put another application of this because we just got five inches of rain here. But I'm going to put another application of black pepper. Or you could use red cayenne pepper. Red pepper flakes. Uh, I was talking with a fellow gardener up here who was telling me that a mixture of garlic, cayenne, and a water mixture, you can just spray that on your plants. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Happy gardening. We'll see you guys real soon. Good morning, everyone. Paul here from the garden. And just a quick video on transplanting your vegetables to get the biggest roots. So here I've dug up a whole bunch of sprouted radishes. And I just dig them up with my trowel, the whole lot. So you just got a whole bunch of loose seedlings and keep those moist. And then I just go around and with loosely tilled soil um, with my finger or a stick, you want to plant that little seedling right up to its leaf base there. See that? And then I pinch it on all sides so that the leaves are flush with the soil. By planting the root deeply, you're also preventing that radish or beet from breaking through the top of the soil and when that happens, you have to keep mounding it over with dirt. So getting them nice and deep to start with will ensure that these radishes will mature really nicely below the soil. And always give your seedlings a good watering immediately after transplanting. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this quick tip and post your comments below. Subscribe to my channel for more gardening fun. The season's just beginning and happy gardening. Hey friends, Paul here. Let me give you a tour of the mid-September garden, which is still yielding an abundance of veggies. Chocolate mint all up in here. I've been harvesting this all summer long, cutting it back like a haircut. Within a couple weeks, keeps growing. I dry it in paper bags and use mint in tea all winter long. Look at that can identify chocolate mint because it's got the purple stems and it's the most pungent 
of the mints I find. Right behind the mint here you can see I've got my fall crop of beets. And how I keep my beets going is I continually mound these with compost, soil, all season long. What you want to do is you want to cover up those beet roots. See how the beet starts to protrude out of the soil? If you've noticed, covered all of those roots up with compost or topsoil, get the maximum beet. I got a monster beet right here, I'll show you. I'll be harvesting this one. Let me bring you in, you see the root there? That's about an eight inch diameter beet right in there. See that, that goes all the way around. It's an enormous beet. And I'll be harvesting that probably around Christmas time. Even when there's snow, a couple inches of snow in the garden, I'll still harvest that. And of course I eat the beet greens. These things are great, sauteed or steamed. I eat those all summer long. You get a two for one with the beets. Cause you get the roots and then you get these delicious, healthful greens as well. Which is great. I love flat leaf parsley. Much better than the other stuff. My cukes are still yielding. And you got that pickle video, I'll put a link in the description, with the lacto-fermentation. Whole beans are the gift that just keeps giving. Back in here, I grew some beautiful gladiolas this year. I'll put up a picture here of some of the glads I bought or grew. First time growing these, absolutely beautiful. It was like a beautiful peach color. These are my Chaters Double Bloom Hollyhocks, which have gone by, but here's a picture of what those look like earlier this summer. This is one sun gold tomato plant all up in here. Look at how far this one sun gold plant covers about six feet long in there. Absolutely amazing. And including over here, same plant, guys, the sun gold. Yeah, I fertilize them with fish emulsion a couple times a year. And then my veggies just go ballistic with the fish emulsion. I use the Alaska brand fish emulsion. Look at this. As long as those cukes are flowering in there with those yellow flowers, they're still going to produce. So here's a typical outing at the garden. Check out this behemoth cucumber. Oh boy, those are big. Pick off that slug there. We don't like those around. Variety of tomatoes. Got some beautiful beets coming along. Absolutely delicious Detroit red always go with that got some mint i'm always drying this stuff as mentioned and of course green beans are just... you guys thanks so much for joining me on a beautiful mid-september afternoon as the garden is still thriving please post your comments below about early fall gardening and join your crops please comment on any of the varieties of veggies or flowers you've seen in this video and have a great day. Hey everybody, Appliance Paul here in the garden. Check out these hollyhocks this season. I've been getting a lot of compliments on these. A lot of fun to grow. Actually growing Chater's Double. This seed right here. If you're coming closer here, you can see that they've got a beautiful double bloom, which is uh, more it's richer, fuller than the single bloom hollyhocks. Double bloom, all the nice frilly ornate center, and the single bloom, which is your traditional hollyhock, even in these uh, chater double mixture, you're gonna get some single blooms, but they're still beautiful. In windy conditions, these can get blown over. So what I'm doing here is just um, tying these off. I kind of like this bamboo. You know, it's very thin and aesthetically it doesn't really take a lot away from growing the flower. And that'll give enough reinforcement for that stalk to remain um, good throughout the growing season. Rust is the bane of hollyhock leaves, and you're just going to provide better nutrient to the rest of the plant by getting rid of these rusted, blighted leaves. That's pretty nasty. I think that's some kind of blight right there. But you want to get rid of all that stuff, and that's going to help the plant grow healthier. You can also see I've mulched up around the bases of these plants. Um, this retains moisture in the plant. It also is going to add nutrients throughout the season because 
as you can tell, these are pretty big plants and they need lots of nourishment. Are you growing hollyhocks in your garden? Thanks for watching. Post your comments below and happy gardening.